Hello everyone, bringing you the Mannequin of the Month for June 2021 today. And what we're looking at here is a recreation of the kit of a private in the 5th Battalion of the Royal Australian Regiment serving in Vietnam in 1969. So what we have on the Mannequin here is a mix of newer and older components uh, of uniform and equipment, which we're going to get into in the video. One point to make at the start here though, uh, as is usual, the topic has been chosen via a poll over on Patreon and there was actually a tie this month and there'll be a bonus mannequin video coming up mid-month as well. Uh, so I've, I'm going to be covering both topics that were chosen. I've just chosen to cover this one for the mannequin, it's month, mannequin of the Month itself, and we'll have the bonus mannequin video mid-month, as I say, so keep an eye out for that. So, as I say, what we have on the mannequin is recreating a, a kit, sort of late war period, based on photographs of 5RAR out in Vietnam, and we have a mix of newer components, older components, and sort of customization of the belt kit, as we'll see as we, we look at this in detail. Going into Vietnam, Australia had M1956 equipment, which had been purchased, uh, contracted for in 1961. It was pretty apparent very early on that, to some degree at least, this didn't really suit Australia's needs entirely. Greater ammunition carrying capacity was, was desired, and various components of 1937 pattern, the preceding web equipment, were used and we have an example of that here even in 1969 it was not uncommon to see elements of 1937 pattern being mixed in and we have a mix of US and Australian manufactured M1956 components as well again very common at this time period so talk about the uniform first before we get on to looking at the web equipment in more detail this again is an updated uh, uniform based on Australia's experience of the war in Vietnam uh, changes were made. Going into Vietnam, Australian troops were wearing a very simple uh, green drill shirt with sort of angular pockets, patch pockets on the chest, and then the crossover belt trousers, very similar to the British 1950 pattern, which had been introduced prior to that in the late 50s, early 60s. Going into Vietnam, this was a standard uniform and it would still be worn at this time by some, but in this instance, we have the updated what's referred to as pixie greens, and this is a first pattern pixie green shirt. I believe that's partly due to the, the angled pockets. They're also sometimes known as twiggy greens because they were tighter cut to the body than the preceding greens. Uh, but Australian troops, the Australian army, generally referred to the shirt and trousers combination as greens, and it's jungle green uniform, basically. It's a, made of cotton drill, this, uh, this shirt. It differs from the preceding design, larger buttons with angled pockets, on the, on the front here, angle pocket flaps. And then we do have arm pockets as well, as, we, as we'll see when we move this round. And as I say, this is the first pattern. Uh, not uncommon to see in photographs in 1969-70 and through to the end of Australia's involvement in Vietnam, but by no means universal. Many men would see at their time still wearing the older pattern of greens. Headgear consists of an Australian-made jungle hat, and this had come to dominate by this point, replacing previous British design of jungle hat, which was worn early on and I believe uh, a pattern which was contracted out of Hong Kong as well. So the Australian jungle hat, they're slightly different shapes. The British one has a slightly more angled brim to it and so forth. Uh, so there we go, that's the basic uniform. We'll talk about more of the details as we move this round, of course. And then the web equipment, what we can see at the front here, are the suspenders from the M1956 equipment set and the belt. Now the suspenders are US made, the belt is Australian made. You can see it has the vertical uh, weave there. This is the earlier uh, type of belt produced by Australia. Uh, they did make horizontal weave belts, but that was a little bit later on, not uh, necessarily wartime. And then we have a dressing pouch here. This is Australian made as well. You can identify that very clearly by the green snap or press stud on the front there, the nylon edging. And then ammunition is carried in two 1937 pattern basic pouches, and these are of Canadian manufacture. Australia received large stocks of Canadian made 1937 pattern and these have been dyed green. Now, by this point, Australia had introduced enlarged M1956 ammunition pouches, but it is still common to see 1937 pattern pouches in use as well. So there's a mix, mix and match there, basically, and I've included 1937 pattern pouches here by way of, way of illustration. These were commonly attached to the belt by having slits cut in the back, or sometimes even having uh, the slide keepers from the M1956 equipment threaded through the webbing, through holes cut in the back. I've used wire to attach these. It's a, a way of attaching them without modifying or damaging the pouches. And that was that's something that's recorded as well, as there were sometimes wire was wrapped around the uh, the upper uh, fair lead for the 
these when these attached to 937 pattern there is a, a gap in the top here through which the brace runs down you can put wire through that and wire them onto the belt and that's how i've done this here so that's the front of the web equipment here we can also see the shoulder straps for the australian field pack which have been introduced by this point this was a an improved pack australians up to sort of mid-war period were having to make do with the 1937 pack by, by then 1937 pattern pack which actually dates back to the 1908 equipment so it dates right back to the great war and, and beyond uh, they'd been making use of that and then also Arvon packs and sometimes US packs if they could get hold of them. So this is an Australian produced pack that was introduced to fill that gap in Australian load carrying equipment. So that's the front of the mannequin. We'll start to move this around now and have a look at the, the other bits and pieces on the web equipment and the other details on the uniform. Looking at the left hand side of the mannequin here, we can see a better angle of the, the 1937 pattern basic pouch there being used for ammunition. And then behind that we have an Australian made M1956 canteen carrier, slightly adapted design in that it does have hanger hooks on the back here. It, they've been reintroduced, uh, but it is currently held up on the belt using the slide keepers in more typical M1956 fashion. And the bottle inside is this sort of forest green colour, is again Australian made. And one of these carriers will of course have a cup in as well. Looking at the uniform itself, you can see we have an arm pocket here with a squared off flap on it there. Just a little utility pocket on the arm there. Quite a useful thing to have. Cuff detail here, you can see there's no gusset in there and you do have two buttons. You have one up here to secure the, the slit in the cuff, which is obviously to allow you to roll it up. And then there are two lower buttons there which allow it to be adjusted in. Very common to see the uh, uniform worn with the sleeves rolled down at this point. Early on, it's not uncommon to see sleeves rolled up you do see it later on as well, but by this point, it's far more common to see in photographs the sleeves rolled down like this. You can see there is actually a reinforcement piece over the elbow there as well, down over this uh, section of the sleeve here, where if you're lying prone, taking aim, your elbows contact the ground, it's useful to have that bit of reinforcement there. The uniform does retain epaulettes as well, in contrast to the later US tropical combat uniform where they were deleted as a, an issue with snagging and so forth, they are retained. Australia did continue to manufacture their, their own adapted uniform with epaulettes on the shoulders. You can also see the side profile of the field pack here, which neatly shows the side pockets with a quick release closure there. So it's a pull tab, quick release on the side there. The padded shoulder straps. One thing I didn't mention looking at the front as well, you do have a quick release on the shoulder straps as well. So this can be dumped by just pulling those and it will fall away from your back. An interesting feature of the design. And you can see the side here, we have the adjustment strap and two D-rings, which mean that this can be hooked in upper and lower, just give more adjustment there for slightly greater comfort in carrying this. And it is padded on the back there. We'll move this around now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back of the mannequin here, we can see the pack dominates. You can see the various features of this. We do have external stowage and so forth on the outside. You can carry an entrenching tool on the back there using the, the little strap here and put the slide keepers through there. Carry handle on the top there, on the top of the flap, as you can see. Straps down with US style buckles, but you have the, the more typical British style of, of tips on the webbing there with a single rivet down the middle. Your top compartment here is for carrying harder kit, and then the bottom part is intended to carry soft kit, really. That's the more likely part to contact your back. So soft kit down here, sleeping gear, that sort of thing, and then rations and that sort of thing up the top. That's the idea of the pack. It's not the best design in the world, but it was better than having to make do with the old uh, 1937 pattern or 1908 pattern pack. Underneath, there are some details to look at as well, but I'll remove the pack so that we can more easily see those. Looking at the back of the equipment here with the pack removed, we can see that three canteens are carried in total, all Australian made, all in Australian made carriers, the M1956 carrier that have been modified. You can see perhaps a little more clearly here the hanger hooks on the back there that allow it to be hung below the belt should you wish to. And then in addition, we have a US made M1956 ammunition pouch. You can see the second pattern here with no rivet in the uh, pull tab there. It's actually had the strap removed that would normally be used to attach it up to the suspenders when worn at the front. And this is just being used as a sort of utility pouch, allowing you to carry a little bit of kit on the belt there uh, away from the pack. So if the pack is dumped, you have perhaps a first aid kit or something like that on your on your belt, you're carrying extra dressing in there perhaps or something like that. 
or extra ammunition capacity is just an extra pouch on the back of the belt there. And finally, looking at the right-hand side of the mannequin here, we can see on the sleeve we have another arm pocket. This is actually a dressing pocket, and you can see it has a double pleat in it, similar to the design of dressing pockets used on later British battle dress and an early combat uniform as well. Uh, you have that up on the arm in this instance with a squared off flap, similar to that on the other arm, but it does have these two large pleats in it to give it that carrying capacity. And otherwise, the sleeve is the same design. You again have the elbow reinforcement and everything there. If we lift this out of the way, you can see the other 1937 pattern basic pouch there slung low on the belt. And then we have the final canteen round on this side here, again, an Australian made cover. So there we are, that's the right hand side of the mannequin. So there we are, I do hope you found this interesting. As I always say, if you'd like the opportunity going forward to vote on the topic, which is gonna be covered each month, do consider checking out Patreon. If you subscribe to the corporal tier over there, you get the opportunity to vote on exactly what's going to be covered. There are generally three options uh, available each month and obviously they rotate round as they're selected. So if you'd be interested to get involved in that, do check out Patreon. And as I always say, a massive thank you to everybody who supports me through Patreon or PayPal. It's very much appreciated. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below and there will of course be stills of this available over on those platforms as well if you'd like to have a look at some photographs of this. And of course, if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't use social media, there is, of course, an email address down below as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.